Hey, do you remember those Nintendo DS Guitar Hero games that were released back in the day? And you had to use that stupid, awful, terrible, worst thing ever made guitar grip attachment to play it? Well, throw that thing in the trash. You don't need it anymore. You do not need that. We can use a real Guitar Hero controller for it now. It's been 15 years since those games came out. We live in the future now. We have technology. You can play all those games on an emulator using any guitar controller you want. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it right now. Step one, you have to download a few things. So go down in the description, find where I have the links. And the first one is the Desmoom emulator or Desmoom A. I don't know how you say it. It's, it's the emulator. So click on the Windows installer, download that. The next one is a script that I wrote that makes the strumming work. Download that. Third is Auto Hotkey, which allows the script to run. Download that. Optionally, you can download Site for Auto Hotkey. This is just the script editor. It, it's better than using Notepad or Notepad++ in my opinion, so it's up to you if you want this or not. You don't need it. And last but not least, you need Anti-Micro X. Uh, so go open that and then scroll down to the Windows installer. Download that. So now with everything downloaded, we need to go through and install everything. And in the case of the emulator, that came in a zip file, so we need to unzip that. Use whatever unzipping uh, software you have. I have WinRAR, so I'm just going to extract it to its own folder. And now this folder can go anywhere you want it to go on your computer. I'd recommend moving it out of your downloads folder just for organizational purposes, but you do you. So now I'll set up AutoHockey. So just go through the installer. It's going to prompt you for administrator access. Just say yes. And that's as simple as that. Now you have AutoHockey installed and you can run AutoHockey scripts such as the one we downloaded here, ghdsstrumscript.ahk. But before we run that, if you downloaded the script editor, install that, it'll prompt you for administrator permissions, say yes, and then this will come up here. Then go through the dialog box to install everything. This shouldn't take long, and it doesn't, so now it's done. Now with that installed, you can open up this strum script. You can either right-click run script, or you could just double-click it, it may ask you how you want to open this file. You want to select auto hotkey so that way it actually runs instead of having it open in the editor all the time. So always use this app to open AHK files. Click that. And now the script is running. And if you go look down at your tray, you can see it's down here and it's running. So now I'll show you what the script actually does and what it's got going on inside. So this is where if you downloaded that uh, script editor, it'd be nice to have because then you can just right click this and click edit script and it'll bring up the editor for you there otherwise you can go down to your tray right click it down there and click edit this script and it opens in here as well so up on top here i wrote a little description to explain what the script does and how you can use it and then i also added some comments at the end of every line to explain what that line does uh, so it should be fairly straightforward to follow but i'm going to go through everything line by line just so you all have a very good understanding of how the script works so the first part of the script is just holding down left click so this is the key that you can bind right here. I have it as left bracket by default, but you can make this any key you want. This goes for all the functions. You can make this T, you can make it a V, you can make it a nine. I don't care what it is, but left bracket is what I have it as by default because it's not a really commonly used key and it shouldn't interfere with anything uh, in your gameplay. And then the next function is releasing that held down left click and I made that the right bracket. So this next function here is the meat and potatoes of what this script does for you. I have it bound to page up by default, make that whatever you want. Again, how often do you use page up? Never, I thought so, that's why I made it that. So this first line sets the mouse coordinates to be relative to your entire screen instead of whatever active window you have. I feel like this is just a better, more universal way to measure it, so that's why I chose it. Next line after that is the mouse get pause function, which just grabs the current mouse position. So every time that you move your mouse, your cursor has you know an X and a Y coordinate, that's what it's grabbing and it's putting it into the variables pause x and pause y. So with those coordinates, it checks if your x coordinate is greater than or equal to this number. This is just what I use. This number will be different for everybody depending on how big and where your uh, emulation window is. So these will be the numbers that you have to change. So if position x is greater than or equal to 1100, move the mouse to position 1000 and then the Y coordinate of 1050. It, the Y coordinate really doesn't matter that much, just as long as it's somewhere over the emulation window, you're fine. And then the zero at the end tells it to move instantly. It doesn't have to wait any amount of time before moving the mouse cursor to that to this position here, 1050. Uh, it just goes there immediately. And then this next if statement just does the same thing, but in reverse. So it checks to see if the position is less than this number here, and if it is, move it to that. 
And that's basically it. That's all it does. It just moves the mouse between two coordinates that you have to set up based on the size of your emulation window. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but first, we have to set up our guitar controller. We're going to set up our guitar controller through Anti-Micro. So go back to your downloads and install Anti-Micro X. You may get this warning. Don't worry, this app's safe. So click on more info. Run anyway. So now run through the installer. Make sure that you click on Create Anti-Micro X Desktop icon, and if, unless you want to go to this file path here, and then go make one yourself, or navigate there every time you want to open it. Uh, but otherwise, just go through the rest of the installer. Now it's all done, and there is an icon on my desktop. So now I'm going to open Anti-Micro, and this is what we got. So now you can press some frets on your guitar controller, and you'll see that the, they light up things on the program. So right now I'm holding down my green fret, it's telling me that uh, my green fret is associated with the A button on the controller. So, I'm going to click on my, my green fret button, and I'm going to assign it to a key on my keyboard. I'd recommend you use E, R, T, and Y for your fret buttons, because those are the default buttons used by the emulator for the guitar grip, which we'll get into in a little bit. You can use whatever you want, but you just have to make sure that you change the settings in the emulator to match whatever you bound those keys to. And now I'm holding down my red. I'm going to make that R. Yellow, T, X, Y. My select button is that. I'll make that X. And my start is that one. I'll make that C. So with four frets and start and select bound, all this left really is the up and down strum and the whammy, which are all things that are affected by that strum script. So you're going to want to bind your up and your down strum keys to whatever key you have set up in the strum script, which is page up by default. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the up strum and the down strum both page up. And now when we run that script, every time I strum up or down, it's going to run, and it's going to move the mouse cursor from one position to the other every time I strum. So now the last thing we need to set up is the whammy bar. And if you know how these on-tour games work, Whammying is essentially just more strumming, so I'm going to bind the whammy bar to the same key that we have the up and down strums bound to, which is page up. So I'm going to wiggle my whammy bar around, and I'll notice that it's bound to left stick. For whatever reason, when I set this up originally, like three years ago, I have made this left shoulder, so I'm just going to do that again. So I'm going to go to controller mapping, and then find left shoulder, and then press down on my whammy bar. So now left shoulder is bound to axis 2. And then I'm going to go over here to Current Axis Detection Dead Zone and change that to the lowest value possible. Click on Save. So now when I wiggle the whammy bar, left shoulder lights up instead of left stick. And now I can uh, go bind that to page up and critically, very important, click on Turbo. And then click on Advanced and you can change your turbo settings. So now this thing can go every 0.02 seconds. So now when you hold down the whammy bar, it's just going to keep going. That mouse cursor is going to be moving between those two coordinates 50 times every second. Now in my experience, the whammy doesn't perform as well in emulator as it does on a real DS, seemingly. I haven't really figured out why that is exactly, but I have noticed that the whammy that I get compared to people who whammy on a real Nintendo DS with a guitar grip and all that is much worse. My star power paths had to be modified a bit to accommodate me getting less star power in general. So I'll keep looking into that, and if I do find a way that makes it better, or makes it perfect even, um, I'll leave a comment down below, I'll pin it, and let you all know. Now when you push down your whammy bar, you should see that that left shoulder is lighting up. And now our guitar controller is done. Now I'm going to save this configuration so we don't have to do it again, and I'm using an Arduino guitar controller, so I'm just going to name it Arduino, so I know which guitar I set it up with. And now we are done, we can start the game. So if you want to leave Anti-Micro up and running on your computer, now you can actually open up the DS emulator, Desmoom, Desmume, I don't know what it is. Open up the EXE, and it'll open up this little tiny window. You can move this around, move it to where you want it to go. Um, but click on File, Open ROM, and then navigate to where you have your ROM stored. I'm not going to tell you where to get the, all the ROMs for the Guitar Hero games. I'm sure you can find them yourself. Um, I'm sure you might be able to Google some sort of secret keyword that you may be able to find down in the comments section down below. I don't know. Um, but re regardless, source your ROMs and then open a game. So this is what the window is going to look like now. You probably don't want it to look like this, do you? So, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger for one. I'm also going to change the orientation so that it's horizontal instead of vertical. So I'm going to go to uh, View, Rotation, 
270. That's what we want. Now I can make this whatever size I want it to be. I'll make it the size of uh, most of my recording window. Now with the correct orientation, I'll just start clicking through all these menus. So now we need to do a bit of setup uh, for our emulator config. Let's go to the config button up at the top. And let's go to the uh, slot 2 GBA slot. And just make sure that the guitar grip is selected. If you're on auto, it most likely will grab it, but make sure that it is selected. And that's why it shows ERTY as my uh, as my buttons in Anti-Micro, because these are the default ones for the guitar grip. So click OK. Now that's all set up. So now your frets will be working in game. Now we need to get everything else working in game. So whatever you decided to bind your start and select buttons to, we need to set those up as well. So go to Control Config, then find your start. I made mine C. And then my select was X. That's fine, because we're not even using that, we're using a different A button, so because there's a conflict doesn't really make a huge difference for us here in this in this scenario, but in general, try to avoid conflicts like this, but it'll be fine here. So now, those two buttons are, are set up. So now we just need to get our strumming set up, and to do that, I'm going to load up a song in practice so that we don't fail out of it. And the goal here is to get coordinates of something to the left of the guitar strings and something to the right of the guitar strings for that mouse cursor to move between. There's a cool tool that's part of AutoHotKey called Windows Spy. So go to your search bar and type in Windows Spy and open that up. And this is what it is. It shows you your exact uh, mouse coordinates at any time. And since I have the script set up to uh, run based off your screen coordinates, this is uh, the set of numbers that you're going to want to pay attention to. So the first step is to find a coordinate to the right of the strings. So anything, basically, this, these are the strings down here. Anything pretty much here on this, co on this column. And... Um, Right now it's at 904, 735. Um, the Y coordinate, 735, doesn't really matter. So for easy numbers, I'll just go down um, to 900, 800 uh, and change that in the script. So now I'm going to open up the uh, script editor right here. Uh, so this number here, I'm going to set to 900. And then uh, down here, I need to set that to 900 as well. And then this one as well. And now we need to find a left coordinate. So over here, the left of the strings, uh, my number is about 700, so I'll go 700 in my script editor. And then don't forget to change the Y as well. I said 800 for that, so I'll change that to 800 as well. So now you can save this script. And now you can click on this button here to run the new script. It'll get prompted here to replace it with the new instance. Click on yes. And now the updated coordinates should be running on this script. So to test that, just up strum and down strum. And sure enough, my cursor is moving between those two positions. All that's left to do now is make sure that a left click is being held down because the game only recognizes strums when left click is being held down. So press the left bracket button on your keyboard or whatever you changed it to in the script. And the left mouse button should be being held down. I say should because you can run into some kind of erratic behavior, which is partially why I included the right bracket button to release left click. Sometimes if you have to use your mouse to click something on the screen, such as restarting the song when you're paused, it won't want to go back to a held down state when you press that key. So to remedy this, I would suggest to press the right bracket key every time before you use your mouse to actually click something. And I'd also recommend you press the right bracket key before you press the left bracket key as well. Generally speaking though, this works very well. And as long as you remember to press that left bracket key before the song starts, you should be good. So now I can play this song with my Guitar Hero controller just fine. Everything's working. And once I get to uh, a long note, I'll show you the whammy too. I'm just holding it down. I'm not moving the whammy like you normally would. I just held it down. So now everything's set up uh, and you've been testing it, you may notice that there could be a bit of audio lag. Uh, if there is, there's a few things you can do to remedy that in the emulation settings. Um, so go to config and then sound settings. Uh, and it, we're, see this buffer size? It's uh, set to 5880 by default. Change that down to about 3000. That's a number that works for me on my computer. Uh, this may be different based on um, your different hardware, how well the emulator can run. Uh, this emulator is not great. It's not well optimized. Um, you may be disappointed at the performance you get, even on pretty decent uh, PCs when you start upscaling. Um, so this number could differ for you, um, but this is a number that I found worked for me. If you go any lower, the audio might start skipping and it might not sound that good. Um, so that works. Other than that, you can go to your actual 3D settings 
and then mess around here. You can change the scaling factor up a bit. This is way too high. I think I play on a scaling factor of 2 normally. Uh, up to texture scaling 4x, multi sample, uh, I believe 16x. You can mess with these options, um, but again, this is going to be very harbor dependent. This emulator, um, not well optimized. Uh, so don't go as high as you think you can uh, for, for emulating a Nintendo DS on your 4090 graphics card. Uh, trust me, it won't work that great. <laughs> but um, yeah, that pretty much does it for this video. Have fun playing these Nintendo DS Guitar Hero games in a way that's not unbearable. Uh, like using that guitar grip is. For me, I haven't played most of these games simply due to the fact that I hate using that guitar grip, and this is kind of allowing me to have a new Guitar Hero experience even 15 years after these games are released. So I think that's pretty cool, and I think a lot of you guys will too. So I hope you enjoy doing this. I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful and informative, and if you have any questions, let me know down the, uh, the, down the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. Perhaps somebody else down there has had the same issue as you, and you might be able to get help from them. Uh, but regardless, thanks for watching, uh, have a good day, and enjoy these silly-ass guitar hero games. See ya.